In cricket, Alistair Cook's form is a big worry ahead of the Ashes series in Australia this winter. The Essex batsman failed again in England's first innings of 233 in the third test with Pakistan, which started today. He made just six before he was out, caught behind. Cook has scored just 47 runs from five innings in the series so far. Now, if anyone in your family took their A-levels last term, you probably won't need reminding that tomorrow it's the big day results day. Well, this week we've been reporting on the tough choices facing students. And tonight, Martin Stew looks at what's in store for the class of 2010, hoping to head off to university. For university hopefuls, the contents of tomorrow's envelope could be bad news or it could be good news. Either way, you've got a problem. If it's bad news, what do you do? If it's good news, how do you afford it? 170,000 students face being rejected by their university of choice tomorrow, 40,000 more than last year. For many, that will mean trying to find a place through clearing. Good afternoon, admissions can I help you. Northampton University traditionally attracts a lot of students through clearing. This year they've set up a helpline and are offering flexi part-time courses to do whilst you're employed. We expect to be busy on Thursday. I think there will be people who are looking for a university place, so I suspect that the telephone will be ringing quite a lot. But we will have some places available, maybe not as many as we've had in previous years. So just why are there so few places? Well. On one hand, you've got more people applying, thanks in part to a baby boom in the early 90s. And on the other, you have universities capping the number of people they'll let in because there are now less financial subsidies available for taking on extra students. But there are some exceptions, like here at Anglia Ruskin University, where they're offering 500 new places. Even so, if you miss your grades, don't panic. In the first two or three days after the results, you tend to get um, horror stories about there are no places and how many people are chasing each place. But actually, in reality, last year, it turned out that the great majority of students got placed who wanted to be placed. Or there's another option. I would suggest that students also think about taking a gap year, not so they can just simply stack supermarket shelves, but they think five years ahead about what job they really want to be doing in five years' time and do some work in a, in a field that's related to the job they ultimately want to do. Grades achieved, problem two is how do you pay? Katie Cox and Maria Harding both study at Bedford College. They're hoping to make their families proud by getting places at the University of York and Birmingham City respectively. I'm the first, so it's like a big experience for us all really. So, yeah, it'll be quite an emotional day I think when I go. But without wealthy parents, they need help. I have a lot of emotional support from my parents, but financially there's not much there at all. And my second choice at uni might even have been my first, but it just cost so much to get to and from, it just wasn't practical at all. Travel's just one of many costs. Because of the family's low incomes, both girls will receive grants and bursaries of around £4,000 they won't have to pay back. That should just cover self-catered accommodation. They can take out student loans of nearly £5,000 to live off, Add to that £3,200 of tuition fees and times it by three, the number of years of their course, and they're likely to leave university with debts of £24,450. It is a hugely stressful issue because they know the more that they can accrue at the beginning, the less they'll have to work during their studies. But many of my students will take part-time jobs during their studies as well, which is good in a way, it teaches them responsibility. But if they do many hours, of course, it detracts from the study as well. But let's leave this on a positive note. Not only is university a fantastic experience, but graduates will earn on average £100,000 more in their lifetime. So good luck tomorrow. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Cambridge. Yes, indeed. Now, we are actually having some problems with our website at the moment, but we'll get all our reports and lots of useful links on there as soon as possible, I promise. OK, let's go back now to our main story, which is, of course, the train crash in Suffolk. And Jonathan is live there for us tonight. Jonathan. Yes, welcome back. And let me just take you through the crash scene as well. 
Over my shoulder, you can see the train, which the train which has taken all the impact from that tanker as it came across through the unmanned level crossing. This has been worked on throughout the day by the emergency services. We look across this way as we speak at the moment. This is a decontamination tent, which all the unit has to go into um, if they've been working on the train, which of course was contaminated by sewage. Further over, that is where the 500 ton crane will be erected over the next few hours. At the moment, they're putting down the stable flooring for it to make sure that it is ready for the lift later on this evening. That's going to be critical as well. Do they go for the train or do they go for the tanker first? Now, Malcolm Robertson, our correspondent, has been following this story from the moment that it started last night. Malcolm, let's start off with the casualties. Of the 27, uh, 21 casualties, seven were still in hospital today. This included the driver, the train driver, who has back injuries, and the most seriously injured, a 58-year-old man who has life-threatening injuries in a critical condition but stable and this afternoon he was transferred from Colchester Hospital to the Royal London Hospital. And of course we shouldn't forget that there is a man under arrest this evening. Yes, a 38-year-old man. The police have been given extra time to question him so he will be held in custody overnight at a police station in Suffolk. 38-year-old man from Ely in Cambridgeshire, although I understand originally from Lithuania and of course he's being questioned in connection with dangerous driving. All right, Malcolm, thank you very much for summing that up. And that is it here from the crash site for now. We'll have more at 10.30 when we'll have more on the erection of, the, say, of that crane and we'll also be finding out the time scale that they expect to lift the train and the tanker off the track. That's Jonathan, it for now. Jonathan, thanks Back very much. Well, some nice sunny spells for the lucky ones today. Let's find out what's in store for the rest of the week with Rachel Mackley. Remember, if you want to get in touch, you can drop us an email to Jonathan and Becky at ITV.com or tweet us now at ITV Anglia. So that's the news tonight as work starts on clearing the wreckage from the train crash site. We'll have the latest in tonight's bulletin after news at 10 and Anglia tonight is back tomorrow at 6. But we'll leave you with the scene live in Suffolk tonight.